Hey guys, welcome to the first ever Syncretist Society podcast. Uh, my name is Danielle Rodenroth, the founder and CEO of soulmapping.life, which is a mystery school training um, opportunity for anyone that is interested in learning more about the codes of existence. And I have my awesome good friend and business partner here with me, Alex Corey who is the founder and CEO of Cultivated Change and expert on all things that have to do with, well, you have many talents, uh, nutrition, fitness, I dabble. tech. Yeah. <laughs> Dabbler. Yeah, we just wanted to share with you guys more about um, a lot of things that we've been working on. Both of us have been working on this syncretist society now for several months, and prior to us meeting, we've had our own, uh, you know, development, our own mastery in our different fields. And we've come together to share a lot uh, about these codes and how to maximize really both the body and the consciousness together uh, to potentiate your unique experience. So, yeah, we're just going to see where this call goes today. Yep. And <laughs> At some point, I'm going to ask you about your origin story, about how you came to design, because that one is interesting. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, so, yeah, from like a really young age, I was into psychology and uh, always into like self-help because I was trying to understand myself more and, and how others think and just really always curious about the mind. And, uh, you know, throughout the years, I, I dabbled in a lot of different uh, philosophies and teachings and religions mm -hmm. and... Uh, got into native plant medicines and traveled outside of the country for several years. Got into astrology and learned about like the cycles and how to evaluate different patterns and, and how that affects things. Um, and then, yeah, I was uh, starting my nonprofit called Hugs for Humans Unifying Global Solutions before I left to go to Peru. And one of my board members, he was like, oh, I, I found this thing called human design. Let me pull your chart. This was like over 10 years ago. And uh, yeah, I pulled my chart and I was like, oh my God, what is this? It's so fascinating. So I started researching like as much as I could. And uh, you know, it all aligned with uh, you know what I already knew about astrology, but on a much deeper, more specific level. Um, and then several times throughout this journey, I, I was given, um, you know, libraries and, and lots of information from people that worked here, use this. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much, you know, while in the jungles of, of these, uh, you know, central and South yeah. American countries, uh, which was really random. Uh, but it's happened more than once. Um, so basically for the last several years, I've been, uh, you know, diving into all this material and uh, distilling it down into documents and just organizing all the information, like combined with uh, the other stuff that I'm into as well. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a pretty fun situation. <laughs> so do you think coming from your experience as someone else who had even a remotely similar origin story who ended with design would have a completely different take on it or would there be more that was similar than there would be that was dissimilar yeah I mean and that's kind of what human design teaches us right. too is that we're each like our own unique filters like mm -hmm. we are all filtering this this field right life what it's composed of is this neutrino ocean and we all have our own different codes so yeah, everyone has their own completely different experiences, even if they had a similar origin story of how they got into design. Um, but yeah, even human design talks about how, uh, you know, fractal lines and how only certain people are on the fractal line to get the information, right? And it's not the only way to the truth. Uh, human design talks about how there's 66 different ways and human design is, is me, one of them. Give me five other ones. Wow. Uh, well, I mean, the biggest ones. It, it could be anyway. I mean, you know, you could get to the, your uh, unique consciousness through meditation mm -hmm. or, uh, you know, lots of different ways, religions, philosophies, other teachings, other modalities, whatever it is that can tap you into your truth and not the homogenized version of your consciousness. When you say homogenized, kind of cookie cutter? Yeah, just, okay. you know, the condition dwindled right. down. It, Group not self <laughs> boxed easy idea right yeah, right okay. kind of like the movie the matrix yeah. you know the red pill blue pill 
uh, you know, we're all kind of in this matrix, this illusion. So the will be the homogenization. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I mean, I guess that's a good way to describe this stuff is the red pill. <laughs> On all levels. Yeah. Yeah, because you can red pill with individual subjects. So you go, I think most people, I, I started in food cultivation and money. And it's usually one of those two. It's either finance or food where people first go, oh, this works absolutely nothing like how I thought it did. Right. Finance, when you figure out how money's made, yeah, that's a paradigm shifter. And then I do nutrition because people think food is food. Right. And you're like, if it was 150 years ago and it were your grandparents or your grandparents' parents, probably you get away with that, but not anymore yeah that's a whole different rabbit hole yeah the the finance stuff it's funny you bring that up Mm because that's actually like what led to my awakening because I was working for this company and and helping people with like rearranging their finances and their debts and all of that and so I wanted to do a lot of research Mm -hmm. to see what was going on and I was like oh wait fractional reserve banking like what is this you know and then that just led to you know, so many different things, the food system, all of that. Yeah, stop. Yep, yep. It was a, I don't know, over 15-year rabbit hole that I'm still in, mm-hmm. diving into all that stuff. And yeah, so Alex and I have a lot of similar background when it comes to just having curious minds about what's really going on in our world and, you yeah. know, all the, the illusions, you know, and, and digging deeper to find out what the truth is with everything. Yeah, and you don't have to shift your belief system just on hearing something, but it's just that curiosity. Where you're yeah. Like, once you figure out one thing was completely different than how you were taught, yep. or how your parents taught you, or how school taught you, you're like, I have a feeling this is yep. everything. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, one other thing that I'm, I'm going to end up asking at some point, and other people might have a question is, can you explain Keynote again? Because that comes up in almost all of our yeah. discussions. Yep. Like, I, to me, it just seems language is the barrier to any esoteric or ancient or mystery school teaching because all practices of different words for the same thing. Mm -hmm. So is that kind of what a keynote is? Yeah, and that that brings up a good point. So I'll address that and kind of give a background too because when you look at any of these coded systems, whether it's astrology or genetics or any of the codes like geometry and math and all of this, they're actually all languages. So human design is a language. Uh, And when you hear the word keynote, it's kind of like, I think of it like a symbol or a sigil. It's like Mm -hmm. a specific word that, um, you know, carries a lot of other meaning behind it. So that's something that human design allows us to work through is is stringing together the keynotes or the, the labels of these particular angles, these archetypes like, oh, I'm a manifesting generator with this and that. But it means all these other things. And I think that that's really the the gift and the, the strong point of all of these systems is that it gives you like a clarity mm-hmm. and precision with communication, right? Because so many people use the same words, yep. but they have completely yeah. different meanings. Yeah. yeah. So um, it does give you that precision like, okay, what is intuition? All right. So we can look at that and it goes into like mechanically what it is. Oh, it's yeah. actually fear. Right. And it's actually coming from, you know, your immune system. And it's it's part of something that's meant to keep you alive. Right. And that you can pay attention to. It's the gut feeling. Right. But not everyone's designed to operate by leading with that. Right. So just redefining a lot of things, because especially in the time period that we're in, in like evolution. Right. Because human design really talks about not just the design of humans, but it's the design of consciousness in form. And so it talks about the yeah the wheel of like evolution. So we can look throughout the whole fractal, right, all the way out to the macrocosm. These grand cycles that all of these other systems and philosophies have talked about through mm-hmm. the ages and all of that. Uh, and it talks a lot about how we can understand what time period we're in as like um, a collective consciousness. Uh, really what the field is asking us to do, right? Like what this time period is trying to extract out of the filtering units, which is us, 
right? What it's, what it's extracting out for the consciousness of the totality. So especially in this time right now, which we'll probably get into this in future podcasts, oh, sure. we are like almost at a mutation. So we're in a very, uh, I don't know if entropic is a word, but you know, we're in this like space of entropy and chaos and right before a mutation, you know, sinks. So really we're all being called to operate in our own unique consciousness. And we have this like closing door that we're approaching. Uh, so yeah, having that clarity with the languaging and, and all of that is, is pretty important. And the more I go into etymology or just the roots yeah. of words, if anyone doesn't think magic is real, right? if you just start digging into where words come from, uh-huh. you're like, Oh, these are just spells. Yeah. Like, this is what spells mean. Spelling. That's why it's spelling. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just because they're everything, seemingly everything older had more power and right. meaning to it. Yeah. And kind of hit harder and sort of the degradation of language and common language. Yeah. Kind of dumbs, English. <laughs> dumbs everything down a little bit and takes the impact and, right. and weight out of words a little bit yeah, yeah definitely a couple other ones that pop to mind other than the keynote that i know people are going to have completely different abstract things pop in their head god yeah biggest one yeah and that's going to come up eventually love is a tricky one uh-huh because some people think of that as just a uh, neurochemical thing with the release of neurotransmitters and hormones some people think of it as a very esoteric concept or well, going up all of those and religion's a weird one yeah yeah (sighs) yeah definitely well and I kind of knew we were going to get into that and I was like I wonder if we're going to talk about God on the first call well it might not be a first you know (laughs) but it's it is interesting because I do get asked like those questions a lot too and uh you know it's more of like a mechanical understanding of things and yeah especially with that turning of the wheel where we are at now in evolution there's a lot of things that are like coming out of the collective consciousness like all these spiritual programs and like you know different things going on with the politics and Mm -hmm. you even see the degradation of language even with like pronouns and like things like that it's very strange and even sexual stuff we can get into that um but yeah, I mean, it's it's something where uh, we're being asked to kind of go into this uh, clearer consciousness and, and know what, what are these things? What is love? What is religion? What is God? How can we describe it like mentally to have an understanding of that? Um, and that's really what this turning of the wheel, the mutation is. It's like the revealing or the light switch turning on mm-hmm. where we're like, oh, this is actually what life is. Like, mentally, we can yeah. grasp it. Because where do we come from? What happens when we die? What are we doing here? Like, what is this, right? And that's, like, what this time frame is doing, the, the neutrino field, the, you know, ocean, the part of the ocean that we're traveling through right now, that's what we're all extracting out. So, we're starting with very all exciting. The light, fluffy concepts. Right <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just some light contemplation. It's fine. <laughs> so, you said neutrino field. Yes. So, I was talking with one of my pretty intelligent friends the other day, and glazed over at yeah. neutrino ocean yeah you give a brief since that is kind of the fundamental of where your chart comes from right and all of that yeah in your words what would the neutrino like what does ocean that mean be? Yeah. yeah yeah and it's funny right before we did this call i was like oh i can't wait to do the first class in the initiation training yeah. because we're going to be talking about you know the concepts of like what is time movement like what is all this stuff right here yeah. You know, and that's uh, all can be described in the understanding of neutrinos. So neutrinos are, uh, you know, smaller than the subatomic particles. um, And it's actually one of the proofs of human design because prior to, uh, I think it was in the 90s, it may have been late 90s, that uh, scientists had discovered that neutrinos had mass. So neutrinos travel just under the speed of light and they oscillate between three different states. Right. And so we know about like quantum physics, too, with the slit experiment, the observer uh, aspect where they also I think they split what an electron and they they uh, spread it against a wall. You know, they they put them separated like one out in space, though, and one here and they whatever they did to this one, it like uh, they could see with the other one that it was affected. Um, So. Yeah, I mean, we're seeing that the neutrino ocean, which are these subatomic particles, 
um, that travel very fast. They come from stars. They come from life. That's it. And this is actually going to go into aliens and all right. of that kind of stuff, right? The star <laughs> beings. Uh, so the neutrino ocean is like this background field. So if we kind of think of life and the movement, the perception of time as like moving through these these particles or everywhere, right? They're like seriously hitting you at like billions a second, right? And you're processing one at a time. So it's like, mm. right? Um, so this is what's going through, yes, your pineal gland and all of this through your whole body. And there's a particular pathway that it goes through, through the filterings of certain planets. And there's a whole process of that um, but the ocean is the background field created from stars and some planets and a lot of it mostly 70 percent of it comes from our sun so if we think about it we're living in this ocean right all this stuff right, right? and as we're moving through we are like a, a sponge a uh, extracting you know organic machine mm-hmm. that's like it's just filtering they're moving through us um, and it's giving us information so the fact that they are just under the speed of light and in the late 90s or whenever it was that they discovered that neutrinos have mass, mm-hmm. this was what the proof is for human design because human design predicted that I think like 10 years or more weird, before yeah. that. And that's like the science even of how astrology works. It's the planets aren't causing things, they're filtering this ocean, right? right? So that gives us a whole other understanding of that. Can I say decoding? coding the ocean yeah yeah i mean so the reason that they carry mass and why that's important is because whenever the neutrino hits something and because again they're oscillating between different states means it's very hard to measure them they have to measure them in like deep ice with these very weird instruments and it took them a long time to discover that um but they they travel through things and it's like when a red car hits a white car so the neutrino passes through, let's say it's the white car, it hits the red car, us, and it gives us a little bit of the white car and we give them a little bit of the red car, the paint, okay. right? So it carries information, it brings information, and it even goes back to explaining like, oh, we're made of stardust. It's not a woo-woo concept anymore. Like this is actually what has created us. Right. You know, the neutrinos are what creates the experience of life. Life is a formula. Right, so we have a vehicle. We have these different aspects of consciousness, not just one. Um, we'll be getting into duality, the mm-hmm. bi- biverse, right? It's not a universe, um, and and the old, you know, yin yang and how that operates. Yeah. But the neutrino ocean is the program. It is the matrix. Right. It is the illusion. We call it the Maya, right? So this is what we're traveling through to experience what our consciousness is here to contribute to the totality. So when you say you're swimming through it, is if you have an experience with an altered state of consciousness, are you no longer in in the ocean? Or does it include that? No, the ocean's always here. Okay. Right? It's like we can't get away from the air. Right. Right? You know, it's like right. everywhere. Why well, would so <clears throat> when someone says that is the matrix, as in it's all around you, you yeah. breathe it, things like that. There are experiences that some people have that would seemingly let them get out of that briefly and escape time and history and all of that. But would the neutrinos still be there wherever mm-hmm. you go, whenever you have an altered state? Yeah, it's the infinite. Gotcha. You know, that's that's the mechanism of God, the all-knowing, gotcha. the everywhere, so the omnipotent. So it's what some people would call consciousness, not the intelligent embodied consciousness, but kind of... That consciousness is everywhere. Sort yeah. of the vacuum. It inhabits the vacuum. Yeah, and it's like the, the food for consciousness. Right. It's yeah. like what the real on the movie. You know, the film. The good one. Like you know, that's like that's being played through us. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's what we talk about when we are talking about the evolution, yeah. right? If we're looking at like a macro scale and like what's happening in this time frame? Where are we in the ocean? Okay. Right? So that's what we're looking at. It's like what are the neutrinos pumping in? Okay. Yeah. And your specific design is just how you interact with that yeah ocean yeah exactly like your particular codes yep yep it's like there was one huge mirror in the beginning right right let's say it was like a this is an analogy like it's a big mirror before the start right it wasn't a big bang it was a great shattering um whatever whatever. Uh, (laughs) so yeah basically we all have a piece of this shattered mirror 
right, that is able to read and, and have the aspect of consciousness. So it's like consciousness as a whole shattered mm -hmm. so they can have these experiences of differentiation to extract something new and to evolve. Okay. Yeah. The, <clears throat> that explanation, w whenever I hear people, very reductionist, scientifically minded people, arguing about the Big Bang and how the creation of the universe as any ancient text describes it where god just went i was like why is that different than the big you're just making things out of nothing it's the same right. thing it's different language <laughs> yeah the same thing like we can prove that and you're like kind of yeah yeah right so it's same concept uh -huh. entirely different that's our western culture interpreting that same event right, right. so that was a fractal mirror yeah i mean it could have been a you know it's a piece of information and yeah. and the whole thing with like different uh theories modalities religions all of these things is that um yeah there can be distortion in how some people are viewing things and that's what we're going to teach too in the the training program is like it's all about coming back to your own authority right, right. so that you know how to differentiate for yourself like what's truth and what's not right because you have your own codes and i believe that that's like where we are at in this evolution right now is like can we pop out of the matrix mm -hmm. and be our own authority or are we going to give everything external to us authority right. right so we're seeing it in everything in the government and the restrictions and it's all dictated actually by the transits right these the the movement of the new ocean that we're in that's constantly you know, changing and, and all of that. So it is really just the conditions of the universe or God or existence, whatever you want to call it, that is setting us up to really extract out the truth. And it's it's by applying all these, you know, constraints and limitations because that's where we're at right now, you know. Would you say the goal would be <clears throat> to be sovereign? I think right now where we are in the ocean mm -hmm. is the goal is to figure out why we exist. It's almost like God is like, why do I exist? Right. You know, and it's like that's it's trying to set up all this different, you know, and it's just metaphors, you know, right. um, when you say God or, or Jesus or things like this, um, you know, people can have their own, own beliefs and, right. and all that. Right, immediately an image that, yeah. that comes. Yeah. Yeah. The all-encompassing. Right. It's usually everything. God yeah. Means, right. Everything. Right. The omnipotent, omnipresent, omni omniscient, yeah, whatever you want to attribute. It doesn't have to be a being. It can be like a source field. You can think of it as a being just because we anthropomorphize everything. Yeah. Whatever that is. Yeah, it's funny. Human design has an acronym for God, and it's Global Orchestration Directory. <laughs> and oh, it, like, talks about, like you know, how we incarnate, right? Because come into the carnate. Yeah. Right. And the the conditions and the formula for like all of that and the whole process mechanically on a macro cosmic level, even of how we come into form, you know, which again goes into all those neutrinos and like what we're doing in the vehicle and how we can like work together with the, the dual consciousness that we have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> there's, yeah, there's food for hundreds of podcasts in yes. just that <laughs> yeah. last 20 minutes. Yeah. So... We just wanted to give you guys a little a little snippet of, uh, you know, what we're creating here and that we're going to be doing a lot more podcasts in the future. Um, the Syncretist Initiation Program is starting in a couple of weeks, so you can enroll um, on the link there that we'll put below. And, uh, yeah, uh, Alex is going to be doing the integration and embodiment aspects. Implementation. Implementation. Yep. Um, Build it into your daily life. So it's not just collecting <laughs> books on a bookshelf. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Or paintings. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we're excited to do more podcasts and, uh, you know, kind of give you guys something new every week that, that we're mm -hmm. wanting to share and just dive into all this awesome geeky stuff about consciousness. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but yeah, so thanks for, for joining us and we'll see you soon. There will be a, a newsletter sign up under this just so we can express uh, consistent podcast times, future guests we have on, new courses, new instructors in the courses, mm -hmm. and all of that. Easiest way to be able to communicate with you guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to Danielle or just shoot us a comment. Yep. Thank you. All right. Bye.